Well, I did like it better than Moonfall. At long last, Morbius has appeared on the big screen. We've been waiting for this film forever and ever and ever, it feels like. This film was one of my top 10 most anticipated for 2022. And I have to say that fundamentally, well, okay, I'm not going to, uh, this, this is how I'll word it. I won't say it was a disappointment because by the time I headed into it, I had a feeling, I'd been feeling for a long time that it probably wouldn't be so great. I mean, I hope that it would be, I hope that it would be, but I had a feeling it wasn't going to be spectacular. It wasn't going to blow me away. And then I accidentally started seeing stuff swirling around about it before even the review embargo dropped and then other things. And then I accidentally saw the Rotten Tomatoes score. So I knew going in that, okay, it's, it's pretty much widely disliked. But I'll say what I told my daughter when she asked me if I had to score it on a 1 to 10. And I don't really like to pin numbers, but sometimes certain numbers come instinctively to me. Generally, if something is five or below, I rate it's not very good. If it's five or above, it's it's okay. So for this one, I think I, I can't rate it as low as a five, but I also don't feel like it warrants a rating as high as a seven. So kind of somewhere in between, maybe six, 6.25, something like that. So I think maybe if you go t into it without any expectation at all you might enjoy it i kind of went into it without much expectation because i already felt that it wasn't going to be so great but you know whatever i don't understand why it just i mean i'll try to put it into words but i don't really fully understand why they couldn't make this thing work because the character to me is interesting i like vampires i like anti-hero-ish type characters conflicted characters i i like that sort of thing it, it makes the comic book movies more interesting it makes them more relatable if you're dealing with a character that you can understand their struggles and you can understand their torment and you can sympathize with them to some extent. And I, I don't know what it was. I guess it's just the way the characters just felt. Honestly, they felt kind of superficial. They didn't feel like they had a lot of depth to them and you didn't really feel like you could or I didn't really feel like I could connect very well with them. Jared Leto is a fine actor, so I don't know why he tends to struggle in some of the bigger roles that he's in. Like, he he did not do very well as Joker in The Suicide Squad, or in Su Suicide Squad, the first movie, in my opinion. I thought his performance was better at, in the Snyder Cut, you know, post epilogue or the epilogue scene in the Snyder Cut he was much better as Joker there but for whatever reason he just doesn't seem to really I mean he he's okay he's going through the motions fine you can sort of but it just for some reason it just doesn't click and that's that part's disappointing it, it because I don't get why because he is a decent actor. But anyway, someone mentioned in the comment section of someplace, I don't remember, that he tur he can turn in great supporting role characters. Of course, Joker in Suicide Squad was a supporting role character, and he wasn't very good in there, unfortunately. I think he was just trying too hard. I think he was overacting in there. But they said that he turns in great supporting performances, but that he struggles as a lead actor, and I feel like that is a continuation with this movie. So I'll start off by kind of going through my notes as I was watching the movie. Uh, the, the very first kill scene with Morbius, it's pretty vicious. I mean, he's got those gnarly claws and he is just gnarly. His face is gnarly. He is exactly like how he's been made to look in the comic books. When he transforms, he gets that nasty skeletal looking face with the claws and the that you know the nose that looks like he, there is no nose that sort of thing and when I was watching I was like wow this is really this is really vicious the way he's killing these people 
and I was thinking to myself, dang, this should have been rated R. I wonder if it were rated R, if, if maybe there would have been a little bit more umph to it, but I'm not sure because maybe making it rated R would have just meant they would have been more uh, gory with the killing and the blood and all that stuff. I don't know. It, it probably wouldn't have turned out a better movie if it had been rated R, but it just feels like it would have been a better representation of the source material. Kind of like with Venom. That was not rated R either, and a lot of people, including myself, feel like it should have been. The girl who played the main female character, I can't remember her name now. Don't remember her name at all. I thought she did a decent enough job. Uh, honestly, she was probably... Her performance may have been one of the better-ish ones in the whole story. Uh, the, the other characters, the cops, they were okay. They were all right. Matt Smith, I feel like he kind of overdid it. I really didn't care too much for Matt Smith's performance in here. He felt like, definitely felt like he was overacting in here. And also his character arc just felt like he, he went from zero to 60 in a lot of ways in this story. And I don't want to get into too much detail for spoilers, but you guys, honestly, the way this story is written, when things start happening and certain stuff is kept hidden from you so that you won't figure things out right away. I figured it out right away. It's not hard. You just know right away exactly what's happening. And so they didn't do a really good job of keeping, keeping that hidden from you. You'll know what I mean when it happens, but I don't, you know, for anybody who wants to go into this completely blind, I don't want to drop any big spoilers. There, there were some moments here that were kind of sort of horror, horror-ish with some of the kill scenes, but when it did that, it kind of fell, fell into that, that, the typical horror setup where uh, someone's alone in a big building or they're not alone but they're walking down this hallway in a big building where really the light should all be lit they should not be dark because of the location that sort of thing and then when the danger is all passed and the killing has been done everybody's milling around the same place as if walking right past the dead body <laughs> it's like watch the kids walking right past the dead body but you know just not long before, whenever the person was murdered, it was completely dark. Like, completely dark. And I just, I was just like, that's... I, I, I had to kind of roll my eyes at that. There was a, a cute little nod to the Incredible Hulk in here. Not the Incredible Hulk that's within the MCU, but the Incredible Hulk from the 1970s. You know, that line, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. There's a cute little... Um, a cute little nod to that that of course I couldn't help but notice I, I wrote it down as soon as soon as uh, the line was said you'll know it when you see it if you know anything about that show so there were also other things that I had issues with not just the fact that just th the characters didn't really feel like they had a lot of depth to them but there were things like whenever killing would occur the bad guy would do this killing and there was no blood on his clothes at all and there was no way for that to be a thing. No way. I mean, it just... I couldn't help but notice it. Like, oh, okay. So he magically is... It rips the throat out of this this particular person, but yet no blood gets on him. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Like, it just wasn't a lot of realistic type things happening to... Not that this movie's realistic. But what I mean is things like that. You notice when things aren't tended to in a movie like if someone's supposed to have been trudging through the desert but they look like they're freshly hydrated and have lip gloss on and there's there's no sweat or anything you know that sort of thing it just kind of takes you out of the moment when when it happens and that's certainly what it did for me as far as the villain the baddie in here the character in my opinion felt paper thin as far as the way they went from being one type of way to then suddenly being another type of way. I feel like we lost something in between, like some sort of indication as to why this particular character would have made such a transformation in the way they behaved or the way they are. And I felt like that just made him just 
not very substantial at all. He wasn't a very interesting villain. And that kind of pulled, pulled me out of the, the moment as well. It just, the, the chemistry between the characters in here, a lot of it felt so clinical and removed. It just didn't, just didn't feel like there was great meshing of personalities in this film. And it, that transferred, in my opinion, it transferred onto the screen. But maybe that's just because I had issues with the screenplay and didn't think it was the most strongly written story that I, I feel like they could have put out something so much better. I, I don't know what I read that there was I read about some other stuff that the screenwriters on this had done and that it just wasn't very good at all. So I don't know why they were people like that with with not the best track record of good storytelling are given material like this because this character could be so interesting and cool and his origin movie just wasn't what I feel like it should have been. I kind of, I was reminded a bit of how I felt when I watched Captain America, the first Captain America, though I, I like that movie better than this one as far as the quality of the filmmaking and the, the, the connection you feel with the characters. I feel like that was done better, even though I was fundamentally disappointed in it. I remember that when I saw his character again in the Avengers, I liked him so much better for whatever reason. It just felt like it was, he was written better. I don't know what the heck it was, but I could tell the difference. And then of course, when the winter soldier came out, I love that movie so much because it was such a huge improvement. I wonder if any subsequent appearances Morbius has in this huge movie franchise, whether it's going to be the same sort of thing, whether maybe um, whatever else we see him in, he'll be so much better. His character will be so much more interesting, uh, appealing, whatever. I'm, I'm curious to find out if that's going to happen. There were some other incongruities or inconsistencies, and I don't know if this was just lazy writing or just they missed something, maybe something that had been edited out or whatever, but I'm not sure. There was a point where uh, Morbius or Jared Leto's character, Michael, Michael Morbius, had said that he refused to drink human blood. The problem is, in a few scenes before, he already had taken human blood. And so that... And even before that, he'd, he'd done it too. Now, maybe he was trying to, like, he, he didn't want to be like the way he had been when he first transformed or whatever. But still, he said he didn't want to do it, but yet he had just done it not long before. And so I was like, wait a second, then you you did already. What? Why are you... Unless he's referring specifically to the, the way human blood is taken. But I don't know. I just think that was kind of some lazy plot hole-ish sort of writing. And then another thing, as far as that goes, with the with the way the writing is. So there is a character that... Okay, I'm trying to think of how to word this without being super specific. There's a character that takes something. And it's not explained, like, how in the world could that person take this particular thing because they were incapable of doing it the way it needed to be done if they, if they happened to take it by themselves. <laughs> and this is super vague, it sounds terrible. But that was something that jumped out at me. It's like, okay, I, I get that this is the way the writing goes and that this is what the character is going to do. And I could kind of tell that that was what was going to happen. But it's not explained how. How? Just because we know that that's what's happened. How did it happen? It makes no sense because there are things that have to happen for this character to be able to do this thing. And the fact that they were able to do it seemingly, I guess, but, but how? There's no way. Maybe you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. But those little things started to just really kind of nitpick at me. Some scenes that were in the trailer, some little clips that showed up in the... Why the heck am I wearing this? I'm sorry if I've been yelling, you guys. I had these on when I started the review because I'd been listening to videos, but I don't need to have them on. Um, what was I saying? Uh, okay, the trailers. 
I had been hearing this before I even went to go see the movie, like a little bit before, about how that references to the MCU or to Morbius' connection with Spider-Man or Venom had been completely removed, that it was basically kind of like bait and switch, you know, with the trailers because they showed Michael Keaton and then he referenced Venom in at one point Morbius makes a comment about Venom and okay so this might be feel a little spoilery but not really because I'm not going to get into details about it but that's partly true-ish but not really because while some things were removed or portions of things were removed from the final cut there were also other things that are shown in the post credit scenes, and there are two. There's not one at the very end. There's just two, one right after the credit starts, and the run, one right after the credits start, and then another one a little bit into the credits. So the, the things that they show in those scenes kind of reaffirm what fans had been hoping for when they saw the trailer, but that it had been leaked that no, that stuff was removed. That's not really the case. And I honestly do not know where they're going to go with this. I mean, I suspect I can sort of see what they're trying to build for in, or trying to lead up to in the future. But I just don't know how all that is going to tie in together with other um, portions of the franchise. So I guess we'll see. I don't know. Maybe it's going to go nowhere. Maybe it's all going to depend on how well this film does. I don't think it's going to do huge. It, I mean, it might do decently at the box office because it's, you know, it's a comic book film. It's been waited on forever, but maybe that's going to be what hurts it as well. Maybe it would have just been better if they had released it in October when they were going to last year. I know it had been pushed back multiple times, but I felt like October was a great time because sort of Halloween-ish and horror-ish and this has elements of that with you know vampire stuff in some ways also the case okay, so the movie is about an hour and 40 something that of course includes all the way through the credits in some ways i felt like the pacing was good and okay and then in other ways there were portions where it felt like it was a bit rushed and it just didn't flow as smoothly as i felt like it should have so i'm not sure I haven't heard whether this is the case, if there's like some sort of other director's cut-ish type version that we might be able to experience in the future. I don't know, maybe if there were an extra 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes tacked onto this, possibly this could have been better. Don't know. I, I've pretty much gone through all my notes. I guess I'll sort of wrap this up by referencing what a, a um, one of the official critics said, and I happen to agree with him. I think it was like maybe someone on Roper's, I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter. But the comment was something along the lines of that this feels like an average 90s horror vampire movie. And honestly, when I was watching this, something similar <laughs> flitted through my mind. I was thinking, man, this just feels like kind of a made-for-TV sort of average vamp movie. I didn't specifically think 90s vamp, but anyway, that, that was sort of what came to me because it just felt like it felt so superficial in a lot of ways. Obviously, with the exception of this has better special effects than things from the 90s, there were some aspects of this that were really cool and interesting, the way they would do how he would jump around he almost turned into like a vapor we saw this in the trailers reminded me a bit of um oh gosh what was that nightcrawler nightcrawler in x-men 2 but I, also there in a sense i felt like he got to the point where he was able to control and harness his powers pretty quickly considering how extraordinary they were so that was another point in the film where i felt like it just wasn't fleshed out as well as it 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 could have been or should have been. But yeah, in general, this just feels like a regular old vamp movie with some cool special effects and not much substance or depth. And that's a shame because this character is someone that could be really interesting 
and for whatever reason they just couldn't pull it off very well. This is certainly not me saying this movie is the worst movie I've ever seen. I was not mad that I took the time to see it. I'm not disappointed that I took the time to see it or spent the money to see it. This is not a moonfall for me. This is not a green night for me. But I just wasn't super pumped about it. I wasn't super hyped and excited. You know, like when you're watching a movie and you just feel this well of excitement and you just, oh. there wasn't anything like that, unfortunately. And that's just kind of, it's like, hmm, it's okay. Yeah. And it, I didn't want it to be that way, but I, I, I expected that it might be. You guys may feel completely different about it. I think that most people are going to feel kind of, eh, about it. And so... I don't know what this is going to mean for the future of his character in these movies, but I guess we'll find out. So, anyway, I, I think that's it. I, I, I don't have anything else I can think of. I, I didn't even feel pumped enough about it to do an in the, in the car after viewing reaction. So I, I didn't. I just went to the gas station and went on home. So, yep, this is my review. These are my thoughts. And I'm going to wrap this up. So I can edit it and get it up before too long, hopefully. All right, you guys. Bye.